Hey everybody, this is Jeremy Martin from Cinco Medicos Retreats, and in this video I want to talk briefly about what an exorcism or shamanic extraction is and how it works. To most of us in the Western allopathic world, exorcisms remind us of self-titled movies and witchcraft, of voodoo spells and crackpot ideas that only your great-great-grandmother would have believed. But let me tell you, as someone with a background in both academia, organic chemistry, economics, psychology, you name it, I've studied it, and as someone with a background in shamanic cultures, I can safely assure you, both from my first and second-hand experience, that exorcisms or shamanic extractions are in fact very, very real. Now, I realize I might alienate some viewers here, and I'm totally fine with that. For those who are actually curious about this stuff, keep watching. So, how do we explain this bizarre phenomenon to a rational Western mind? It really defies what science and logic would have us believe, most of which is true, by the way, but certainly not all of it. Well, sometimes, in fact, very, very rarely, after someone has experienced a traumatic event or series of events, PTSD or CPTSD, there remains a deep and dark energetic signature or stagnant imprint, which has more or less taken control of the person. This malevolent energy can later manifest in so many behaviors and mental disorders that we call drug addiction and schizophrenia or depression, depersonalization, multiple personality disorder, derealization, just to name a few. Now, during both ayahuasca and wachuma or San Pedro ceremonies, I've seen people quote unquote possessed. And when the shaman or facilitator or maestro, whatever word you wanna use for it, leading the ceremony, would go over to that person, they would then use certain tools, spiritual technologies, to first find and then identify the source of the possession, then extract it from the person very methodically, almost scientifically. Now, for modern medicine, we would call this first step the intake process, where the doctor would take a survey of the person's physical, and in this case, energetic body as well, and in order to do this, they need to formulate a diagnosis. Now, when the shaman is able not just to see, but to actually feel, and therefore know what kind of energy has attached itself to the person, for example, the energetic memory of a sexual assault, which may have happened 30 or 40 years ago, but still remains lodged in that person, well, then they can prescribe a solution to remove that blockage, that low or negative vibration, so that this spiritual infection no longer keeps making them mentally and or physically ill. In shamanism, oftentimes under the influence of a plant medicine or a trance, when the practitioner visualizes or feels this energetic distortion, sometimes it's an entity, a personality, a dead spirit or interloper, which has kind of been squatting in the person, almost without their permission or without their knowledge. This is kind of the cliche, however. We tend to think of demons and things like that, but much of the time what's dogging the person is simply a deep, deep rot of sadness, of pain and anger, which is a lot like a parasite made itself very comfortable within its host until the host doesn't even feel enough to acknowledge its presence or feel compelled enough to do anything about it because they've kind of gotten used to it. As in Stockholm Syndrome, they've kind of come to love their captor. Now, when the practitioner sees and feels into this person's conscious body, they can then begin to work with and move the energy at will until the energy is no longer a part of the person. Now, depending on the ceremony, the plant medicine and the practitioner, the shaman or maestro will nearly always utilize a very specific method, one totally bespoke and appropriate for that person. So there's no manual to this. In ayahuasca, they might sing in Icaro only for that situation or circumstance. An Icaro whose vibrations can worm their way into the person, a lot like a scalpel or surgical instrument, and remove this demonic tumor, so to speak. For Wachuma or San Pedro, this could be whistling, playing the maracas, blowing tobacco smoke, using sage and palo santo, Sometimes it's blowing with a feather. Sometimes it's a cold plunge. There are many, many different techniques that you can do. Now, sometimes it also involves sucking out the vibratory distortion or entity. It really all depends on the person, the practitioner, the medicine, 
and the source of the possession, how long it's been there and things like that. Now, if you're a participant in a ceremony or the actual practitioner, him or herself, you'll likely witness this black vibratory knot depart from the person as the extraction or exorcism is being done. I have done this personally and I have seen other people do it multiple, multiple times. For the person on whom the exorcism or extraction is being done, it's usually not a pleasant procedure at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. I've heard people scream so loud you could hear them from half a mile away. I've also seen people sob and cry for hours or thrash around wildly because usually whatever was in there doesn't want to leave by its own volition. It kind of has to be snake charmed or seduced out against its will, which can be a very, very intense thing to do, see, or be a part of. All this is to say that there is absolutely zero doubt whatsoever in my mind that exorcisms and shamanic extractions are both real and really work when properly done. The issue is there's practically no way to teach this skill. It must be understood directly from experience to be fully known and mastered. Many people may claim they have the ability to do this but lack it, which is why there's understandably so much skepticism and mockery about the practice. It's also good to be open-minded, sure, but also have a healthy degree of skepticism, at least in my opinion. I can only say that a small drop of people really have this art nailed down to a true science. I certainly don't. But the ones who do, now these are really the truly powerful people, the true masters, the onayabo, a Shipibo word which translates roughly to the ones who know. Anyway, I hope you guys have liked this video. Please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in shamanic ceremonies, please visit syncomedicos.com for more information.